Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for week 133 of Build Your Stash and Craft. Today we are going to play with this raffia ribbon from the dollar store. It cost us a dollar, and it's just this thin, kind of ribbony-like paper. And the cool thing about it is, when you open it up, it winds up being about an inch wide. And what I do is I just cut a section about 12 inches or so, depending on what you're looking for. Um, you know, you can cut it as long as you want. You can leave it attached right to the reel and just continue going as you go. But I just take a piece and then I just open it up like this. And I use it as a border. You can also use it as, um, we're gonna kind of ruffle it. And if you sew, you could, you know, sew it together and make a ruffle out of it, but you can also just glue it. Kind of if you run your hands down here, it loosens it up a little bit. And you can open it up as much or as little as you want to. And then you can use pretty much, I have not found a product that I can use on paper that I cannot use on this. The nice thing about it is it is really pretty strong. And so when I um I was trying to rip a piece off and it it did rip off but it was really you know I really had to work at it to get it ripped. Now ripping it this way is a whole lot easier than ripping it across. But now we say, oh no, I ripped that, I ruined it. No. It just gives it a little bit more interest, a little bit more texture to your project. And the really cool thing is, once you get it all opened up, you've already got this built-in texture. So that is another really awesome thing that I like about it. But And then once you get it opened up, you can color it with absolutely anything. You can use your sprays on it, and you can use your... Here's our, um, our wax colors, and... I'm just going to take a couple of these, mix them up a little bit. Let's take, I think that this one is yellow, and let's do a green. I don't think we want red with yellow and green. Let's try, is that orange? I don't know if one of them's orange or not. Let's do yellow and green. Um, let's do purple and pink. It's darker, so it'll be easier for you to be able to see with how far away it is. Now remember when this these wax colors we made a while back, these are liquid wax colors, and they are made with a floor polish. And so if you go back and look through the um, videos, you'll be able to find it under liquid wax colors in the Build Your Stash and Craft um, videos in the playlist but um, they soak in really nicely and the really cool thing about this is is that when you paint on it with the wax colors or with the wax paste the I think that's what we call them wax paste um, it it goes a little bit see-through and that's really quite that's really quite neat looking because like see I don't know if you can see right here where I had some black ink underneath this and now you can see it really, really well. So I'm just gonna, and you just, you do have to let these dry. It takes a little bit of time. I've still got a lot of purple on my brush. It's all kind of coming out the same color. Here we go, I got a little bit of a little bit of the purple there. Turn this around. You do have to let it dry. And then once it dries, you can stamp on it. You could stamp on it ahead of time with your stays on. Um, stamp on it afterwards with your other ones, the, the Hampton Art ones that we got, because they, they would move if you stamped on it before you put this on there. When you put this on there, it would make it move. But then you can just take it and set it aside and let it dry. But I just think that's really cool. I love how that see-through. Isn't that really cool? I mean, it's, an, it's sturdier than tissue paper. So, you know, tissue paper, you can kind of get it to get a uh, a clear look, too. But what did I do with my... I don't know what I did. Oh, here it is. Didn't know what I did with my roll of this. Um, 
but tissue paper, you know, is really quite, quite delicate. So the nice thing about this is it's pretty darn sturdy. And so we're just going to stamp on one and see what it looks like. And you can use your sprays on it. You can just use your regular markers on it. Anything you can paint on it. You can shred it up a little bit to give it a different texture. Oh, and I did want to try one thing. I wanted to try, let's do that right this second. I wanted to try not move these. I'm going to turn this around so that I'm not on that wet spot up there. But I want to see if you leave it all wound together and spray it. I'm wondering if because of the wrinkles and the way that it's crunched together, if you spray it and let it dry a bit and then open it up, if it'll have the color and then a little bit of the white. Well, this isn't really white, it's kind of a light pink. But, you know, so the color and a little light pink and the color and a little light pink. So let's spray it now so we can give it just a little bit of a chance to dry. because it's absorbent, but it's not super, super absorbent. So I'm thinking that possibly it won't absorb through all of the crinkles. And it was something I had thought about, but I forgot to try it. So we're gonna try it right now. And then we'll try stamping, because I haven't stamped on it yet either. Oops. Always remember when you use your spray bottles to wipe this off or otherwise when you go to use it next time it's not going to work. It's always either the nozzle there or your tube is clogged. If your things ever get clogged up, the best way to do it is soak it in some warm soapy water for about 15-20 minutes. And most of the time I find that um, when I take it out, then it works unless it's just the whole sprayer mechanism is broke. I've had that happen a couple of times. I bought them and they didn't work even when I bought them. Okay, so now we've done that and we're just gonna set that aside. And then we'll stamp on this one. So, just get my little stamp block here and grab some of our little stamps that we got that are from Hampton Art that we got at the Dollar Tree a while back. And I'm just gonna line them right up. Right on my thing so that I can just stamp them all at the same time. However many will fit on here. They don't have to be perfectly straight or anything like that because then you can use this and tear it apart and use bits and pieces, but I've just got those lined up now. And I'm gonna grab, well, because we're doing it on a white piece, we'll use the stays on to start with. And then we'll stamp it on one that's already colored. So, cause with the stays on, then we can color over it and we know it's not going to smear. I'm gonna flip the sun over because he's upside down and just in case I wanna use the whole strip all at once, I don't want him to be upside down. So then I'm just gonna put that on there. Didn't get it straight, I'm very crooked. Give it a good press and let's see how it stamps. It stamps nicely. I wasn't sure because it wasn't super, it's not super absorbent. I wasn't sure if it would absorb the color or not, but it looks really nice. Of course, and stays on is made for non-porous services, so. So that's really cool. And then you can just color over that with any of your colors. Um, let's just grab some of our wax color here. I really should wipe these off better when I put them away. And just go over top of that and see how that works. And that works really nicely. And then with your wax colors, you let them sit for a little while and then just buff off the, the waxy part. 
because it does it does stay kind of like um, sticky or I don't know how you'd want to say that but you can still feel the wax on there until you buff it off but if you let it sit for a little bit longer for a little while um, then it will the color will absorb more Let's put a little red with the blue There we go. There we go. Red, white, and blue. We'll leave it just like that. Okay. I'll set that aside and let it dry for just a second. I'll wipe my hands off. And then let's let's color a little piece of it with some marker and stamp on top of that and see how that looks. I'm just cutting smaller pieces now because it's I can undo them a little bit faster. But I just I think this is really cool. Now I've a lot of times I have made reels of border paper like this with cash register with cash register rolls and that looks really cool but the thing is is that if you look them up you know you have to buy them in big amounts like at staples or whatever but if you keep your eyes open at second hand stores and garage sales and you know just pick up one or two or sometimes they'll have a whole package of them that's where I got all of mine but to do them for the series we would have to buy like a whole big set of them and I'll tell you what one roll will get you a long ways so because um there's a lot on there but it's really a really nice thing um you know my paper rolls that i do um i just sit in the evening and i just kind of pull out a piece and i doodle on them and then you know i just throw it off the side of my chair and just keep right on going and um then when I'm all done, I just roll them up on the other end, just on any, you know, a piece of a pencil even, just any little round thing, any kind of a reel. You can put them on an old um, spool if you if you have an old, like, uh, thread spool or something. And so I have lots of them that I've done that are, you know, four or five feet long. And then, you know, I just cut it off, stick a rubber band around the spool. My markers are getting dried up because I have not actually used them a lot um, they are probably dried up just because they're dry so if I put a little water in take off the barrel and put a little bit of water in there they will probably come back to life let's see what else we have here that might not be as dry And of course, for video's sake, I'm not doing the best of a job, but we're just going to go with it. And you can use any of your markers. The metallic markers that we bought look really pretty on here. Okay, so there, we've colored them with watercolor markers. And now let's, let's use our colored stamps. Let's just... Um, on the top were green, brown, and pink, so what the heck, that's the colors we'll use. Let's see how these take to it. And just give that a press. And these Hampton Art little um, things came from Walmart don't remember how much they were but I think they were around five dollars so it stamps really nicely that way too and then you can just take those and you have to be careful ripping them because if you just try and rip it like that it'll like rip down here and it's pretty sturdy there's some pretty sturdy fibers in there and so there we go now we've got just a little insert to stick somewhere um, in a collage or just on a page 
So I'll show you the ones that I've already done. How is this? Okay, this is dry enough to open it. Let's see if it soaked all the way through. And it did. So I wasn't sure how that would work. I was hoping it would leave some stripes in there. But this is a very wet color too. So if you tried it with some other kind of color, it may not soak all the way through. But that's what our sprays look like. And so that also makes it a little transparent. I love the way they go transparent when you use the waxes. I think that's really quite cool. Let me just wipe this wetness off a little bit. So, and then let's see here. All right, so I'm gonna take this one. This is the um, wax paste. And I'm gonna just show you like what I think we could do with it. I haven't done this yet either, but I think it would be really cool. Everybody now is doing um, like little ruffles. And I thought this would be really cute ruffled. I'm not really sure how well this wax is going to glue but we'll find out. So this is all wax paste. This is liquid wax, this is um, wax paste, and this is liquid wax. So it's really cool how you can see through them. And so, you know, you can just do a ruffle for your, just kind of, um, just fold it down and fold it down. So basically, Okay, fold it back and then bring it back forward. And then fold it back. However, you know, these are about a half an inch. And then when I bring it back forward, I bring it back forward right about at that same spot. Fold it back. Bring it forward and fold it back. And there we go. Now, like I said, if you're a sewer, I don't know if you'd want to sew with the wax ones. You know, I don't, you know, know that you'd want to get that wax in your, on your needle and stuff. But, um, you know, you could sew right down the middle. But because we don't have a sewing machine, you can just go ahead and put a little dollop under each one. And I'm just putting it in the middle. Bringing it out to the end. Like that. And then, to me, I think that um, you can either leave it like that, or you can turn it over and go through and, and glue it down in all of these spots also. But I kind of like that it's a little bit fluffier if maybe if you don't do that but there then you can put that right I need to wipe my hands off just a little bit better and I'm gonna move this because I'm gonna grab my journaling on a budget but, um, journal so we can just see some of the things that we could do with this okay let's just find a blank page So you could just put this right on your page like that. It looks really cute. You could put it over here. I don't know that I would use it to make, not the roughly one especially, I don't think I would use it to make a tuck spot, but I would use it as decoration. And you could put a little like, um, maybe some sequins down the center or something would be really cute. And then, let me see, where's some more of them that I already had done? There we go. This is our sprays. This one has sprays on it, and this one is the liquid wax. And it does get nice and kind of shiny. But you can take it and fold it over your page like this and glue that on there. And that looks really pretty. I like that. And so you've got it on both sides. As a matter of fact, we're going to put that on there because I really like it. I shouldn't be doing it in this video. I should be doing it on my journaling and a budget video, but 
don't need that much glue. Holy cosmoly. And I would imagine because this is so light, it probably, if you have a good glue stick, it would probably glue down just fine with a glue stick. And I like this little rip top. I think I want to do it. Do I, do I? No, I'm gonna take it all the way up and cut it, cut it off. So there we go. Now we've got all that texture. We've got that shine from the sprays. Let's put a little bit on here. I'm just gonna go like that and spread it out this way. And there we go. Talk about crooked as crooked could be. Just grab my scissors and just cut that right off. There we go. Just trimmed off the top and the bottom. Whoops. And trimmed off the top of the paper right there. There we go. Isn't that? I really like that. I just love how the little crinkles look. I like the shine of the sprays. And I just think that that's just something nice instead of lace to set off the edge of your page. Now, if you want to put it on a page and you want to go like around a page, you can put it on there like that. And then like, I thought it would look kind of cute to kind of give it a little bit of a twist at the corner. Because it's pretty thin, you can kind of do a few things with it without it being too bulky. But just give it a little twist and then put it down the other side like that. Or even, you can do that. You can give it a twist every so often. And then when you get back to the open side, put that back on and glue it there and glue it there. And just have this this different look like this. Let's go down a little bit further. I'm not going to glue this one on here because I don't know what I'm doing with this page. But but once you glue the flat parts on, the little twist will kind of be there off the edge, like that. And then what you could do even is you could even put a jump ring around here and hang a little something off of that little spot right there where the where the twist is because the twist is not attached to the paper it's just attached on each side so there's just so many things or even just you can even just put it on your journal like this you just go down a ways and give it a twist and go down a ways and give it a twist and just put that on there and it just looks really cute now twisted it's kind of solid twisted Let's see. So you put that on there, like as a belly band. And I think you could use it. It might be a little bit, it's not gonna slide in as well because with all the twists and everything, it does have a little bulk to it. But that would still look kinda cute. Or you have a pocket on your page and put it across the top of the pocket. So anyways, that is just that is just what I like to do with these. This is just metallic, permanent ink, and watercolor. You know, just the kids' watercolor markers. So that's what they look like. They all work on there. And paint works on here. So um, I just think that these really, they really do, um, you know, look pretty cool. I really like the way that it works. I like to have my own little, you know, borders. You can put your border on there like that, like this. You could use it. You could glue it onto two pages, um, you know, for looks, kind of like how we did our washi tape here, and then just glue it on with, with your stick glue. And here's our, our sprayed red, white, and blue one. Let's see if we put that on top of there. See how you can see right through that? Isn't that really 
bring it closer so you can see it even better. Isn't that cool? I just really like that. So you can put that on a page, set this on our stripes here, and look at that, you can see right through it. I think it's awesome. So I really do appreciate you stopping by. So this one, again, we're gonna need to buff off the, um, the wax on there. And this one is just about dry, not quite because of where it was touching the plastic tablecloth. But, so I hope that you enjoyed this video. For $1, you can get a whole lot of, um, a lot of fun out of just this little raffia ribbon. And, you know, like I said, you can do so many things with it. You can, you know, you can cut hearts out of it. You know, it's so great because it has that texture. It has that crinkly texture even after you do something with it. So it's just something that's nice. It's different than, you know, like some of the other things that we use. So it's just fun to play with. Thank you very much for stopping by. I need to show you what we need for next week. Let's see here. Okay. For next week, we're going to need some of these. Um, these are large checker pieces. It's a checker game from the dollar store. And then we'll need some of our cardstock, some paints, um, maybe some, definitely some chipboard, like um, cereal box or something like that. Doesn't need to be a super heavy one. And um, so this is what we're going to need for next week, is we are going to need these circles out of this checker game. And then we're going to need some things to go with it. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. I really do appreciate you stopping by. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.